This is Josh Holyfield, and welcome to another episode of Make America Swole Again. A no bullshit, no sugarcoating, snowflake free podcast where I teach you how to step out of your comfort zone, stop dreaming, and start smashing your goals in fitness and in life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Josh Holyfield, and welcome back to another episode of Make America Swole Again, where I'm with you on this beautiful, fantastic, phenomenal, wonderful, amazing, and incredible Tuesday evening to hopefully provide you with a little bit of motivation, some information, and some inspiration so you can stay on track and reach your motherfucking goals. So last week, I'm going to just co- go ahead and openly and directly admit that I was being a little bit of a fucking whiny bitch last week, upset because we had some whiny bitches, right? And so... It's kind of interesting because when I go back into perspective, like I go back in time and when I very first started the Iron Forge, one of the big lessons that I had to learn that was really hard for me was it, number one is if you are not getting hate and negative comments and what's the word trolls on your content, it's not polar enough. You're not doing the right thing. You should be offending a group of people right and the reason for that is because in order to create business especially when it comes to attracting coaching clients you have to align with yourself with a system of values and and that system of values is something that you have to very firmly stand in integrity in and the clients that you attract when it comes to your coaching offer and the help that you provide to your audience or however you want to reference them the reason they hire you is because they have an alignment with that system of values and there's a, a misalignment between their actions and that system of value, right? So long story short, the easier way to say that is, hey, I like what that guy stands for. He's living a version of the life that I want to lead. I want to hire him so that I can replicate that thing. And in order for me to attract those types of people and build strong relationships with them, I have to speak about controversial or polar topics. But what's interesting about that, especially on the internet, is when you start to talk about those types of controversial or polar topics, it's not the ones who support you who speak up. It's actually the ones who don't agree with that, who want to comment, engage, and argue, right? It's more likely for me to point out something that I don't agree with than it is for me to point out something that I do agree with. It's kind of where I'm going with this, right? And so a lot of times you'll find, especially with the bigger influencers and their content and on their pages, they find themselves in a place where most of the content that they see or the engagement that they see on their stuff is haters, trolls, people talking shit. Why? because they're very polar and they're getting a lot of attention. But what I've started to realize, or actually what I realized and what was important for me to understand is that for every one of the people who doesn't agree, if your message is good, if your content is good, if you're living in alignment with those core values and you're doing what you should be doing and living in integrity, there's five more people who do agree and do support your message. They just may not be vocal about it. This is something that I've always had in the back of my head and also something that I've made it a point to teach my business coaching clients who are looking to start their online coaching businesses and build an audience and create relationships with people online. Last week, I let that get the best of me, to say the least. I lost my temper. I got upset. And the reason for that is because if you're like me or my coaching staff, and if you've been paying any attention to us over the years you know that we care a lot about the people that we help. And we invest, we invest a lot of ourselves into this. And we're very passionate about what we do. And it's so important. And the part that you guys don't see is that, yeah, maybe you may just see a clip of Josh Holyfield talking from his podcast or the coaching, and you get these bits and pieces of, of what I see, whether it be on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or YouTube. This is all I do is try to help other men. And while you may not see me on Facebook or Instagram, in the background, I'm working on 
my business. I'm supporting other clients. We're doing check-ins. I'm doing coaching. I'm delivering on that promise. And we have a lot of clients, hundreds, in fact. And all of those clients need a certain degree of, of attention. And we've dedicated our entire existence towards serving and supporting those people. And so then when we get naysayers and people who hate on it and just a constant stream of inbound fucking negativity, it becomes exhausting. And so I'm just going to go ahead and come forward and admit like last week, especially on my Iron Forge group coaching call, I allowed that to get the best of me. And it required that I take a step back and reassess why I'm doing what I'm doing, why I'm here who I want to serve. And rather than spending all of my time focusing on the people who don't align with that, instead, we should be focusing on doing a better job of serving the people that do. And so if you were offended or upset or the things that I said last week bothered you or you're like, man, this guy's being a pussy, I agree. And I'm just going to go ahead and take the time to apologize. Like I got upset. I got my, let my emotions get the best of me. I felt defeated. And we're back here again this week to hopefully put a new spin on the content and the message that we're going to be delivering to you guys from this point forward. And so for those of you guys who don't know, I do two coaching calls a week or I do two calls a week. So this one is a live stream podcast. The focus of Make America Swole Again is very straightforward. It's mindset, motivation. That's what we're here to teach. Okay. Okay. You're going to get a little bit of like training, nutrition, relationships, masculinity trickled in. But most of the time, the only time I'm going to introduce those things is or those topics is when it's relevant to the mindset and motivation message that I'm trying to deliver that night. And then Thursday nights, we do training, nutrition, and then some relationship stuff. And so the goal with the Thursday nights is to provide more practical knowledge tactical level, actionable things that you can implement that pertain to your health, your fitness, your relationship, your mindset, your masculinity, your spirituality. Like our goal with the Iron Forge is to give you specific things that you can implement into your life where the Tuesday night call Make America Swole again is more intended to provide you with higher level, more what we'll say theoretical concepts, which is mindset motivation. Okay. And so I'm going to be doing a better job of kind of planning out these segments and really taking the time to script these out. I've got my wireframe for the episode pulled up here. But before I went into our content for tonight, I just wanted to take the time to kind of let you know that one of the things that I've preached consistently, repeatedly over my entire career working as an influencer, if that's what you want to call me, is accountability and ownership. And the truth is, is we haven't seen the growth with the podcast that we want to see. And the reason why is has to do with 100% to do with the fact that the content's not good enough. So my goal with doing this, if I'm going to be in spending so much time doing it, is we're going to improve the quality of the content. So that means Tuesday nights, you're going to get an actual lesson, a perception, a point of view that you can take away and hopefully apply to your life to make it better. And then Thursday nights, it's going to be a roundtable discussion with me and all of my coaching staff, which here within the next six to 12 weeks, we're going to go from two coaches to four. And so there'll be all five of us on that call. And it'll be a roundtable where we go through and provide actual tactical, practical implementable knowledge that you can do like so asking direction answering questions directly pertaining to the things that you need help with as far as your health nutrition training relationships business are concerned okay and so that's the goal that's what we're going to be doing moving forward and then in addition to that just so you guys know we're also adding another layer to this where if you guys aren't familiar, what I've done is, is I've started taking on business consulting clients where I work to help business owners, specifically online coaches, basically build automated systems into the back end of their business so that they can scale, build and scale their coaching businesses. And so we've done that. We've done a really, really good job so far. I've picked up four clients already. 
and all four of those clients are doing at least $500,000 per year. And that's the low end. Our top client is actually doing 3.5 million. And I'm the guy who's managing all of the marketing collateral for the back end of his business, as well as doing the scripting for their ad content, managing their ad account, and also building the back end automations to streamline the lead nurturing process for them. So if you don't understand that stuff, sorry, but just a heads up, that's another project that we've opened the door on. Coach James is stepping in and he's going to be focusing on like the day-to-day -day operational management of the Iron Forge, which is the fitness company. I'm going to be stepping forth and focusing on building the team and getting the systems put in place for the new business that's going to be focused upon providing business coaching and systems development for online, online businesses. So like I said, we've already built that business up where it's a six-figure business. We did that in less than uh, six weeks. And we have, you know, the ongoing monthly recurring revenue to do that, which is really amazing. Never in my life did I think I'd be able to start a business from zero and within six weeks already have it to a six-figure run rate, which is really awesome. And so we're going to be focused on that. And you guys will be getting the kind of residual of some of that content delivered to you here on this podcast as well. So more business related content, teaching you guys how to create success and sustainability in your finances, as well as your job or your business. So hopefully you're okay with that. We're going to be trying to do like more of a holistic picture for men. And every week we'll be doing one overarching topic. If you have any questions about any of the stuff that I talked about, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And I'll just go ahead and address those questions now, just in case anybody's concerned or they're not sure. But the last thing, while you guys are typing questions, if you have them, that I want to reflect on is I've also had made the realization that, and I said this today in another video, this is what I did sounds a lot better than this is what you should do. If I come to the table as an influencer or an internet guy or record content or even this podcast or this video and I say, this is what you should do. This is why your life is fucked up. If you want to be successful, you need to do this. You, 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 and I'm pointing the finger. I can understand how you would feel attacked. Fuck this guy. He doesn't know me or my life. And it's probably hard to listen to some of the content because you feel as if it's an attack upon you and your manhood and your masculinity and your integrity as a person. Totally understand. I want you guys to know that that's never been my intention, ever. All of the things that I teach, all of the things that I talk about, any of the content that you see come across any of my social pages, and I have a lot of social media pages, comes from a place of experience. And so what, that, what does that mean? That basically means is I've gone through this very challenging thing and done the work and the development and gone through the pain and the hardship and the failures and wanted to quit or even may have given up. I've been hurt. I've been heartbroken. And through that process of what we'll call atonement, I came to a conclusion that this is the best way to achieve this outcome, right? This is just a fancy way of saying I've done it before. So I'm trying to save you from learning the fucking hard way. And so a lot of times when I deliver content in the message that I'm speaking, it's you should do this. Here's why you don't have this. Here's what you need to do if you want this, right? You're not successful because your wife doesn't want to fuck you because you aren't big because you're not losing weight because and when somebody speaks from that position, regardless of how valuable or good or accurate the information is, the way that they perceive it is much more important, aka the delivery is much more important. And a lot of times where I think I've missed the bar with a lot of this content and a lot of this messaging and a lot of this just dialogue with you guys is... It feels like I'm doing this because I'm not giving you the why and the how that led me to the conclusion to give you the what. Hey, you want to do this, but I leave out this is why you want to do this and this is how I came to that conclusion. And we need that context. Otherwise, two things are going to happen. One, 
Fuck that guy. He doesn't know my life. He can suck my left testicle, right? Or And or two, my situation is different, and he doesn't know my life, so I'm going to learn the hard way myself. And I told this story earlier today to one of my clients. One of the things that happened to me when I was about four years old is my father, he had left out a soldering iron on the kitchen counter. And I asked him what it was. I was like, hey, dad, what is that? And he's using it to solder something, fix something in the house. And he's like, don't touch that. It's very hot. And he walked out of the room. What did I do? He didn't answer me. He didn't tell me what it was or why I couldn't touch it. He just said, don't touch it. He didn't even say it's very hot. I redact that. And so, of course, what did I do? I went and I grabbed the soldering iron. And I ended up getting third degree burns on my hand to the point where I'm screaming and it was so hot, it melted to my skin. And they had to peel this soldering iron off of my hand. Guess what? I never touched a fucking soldering iron again. <laughs> and that's the lesson. But the, the lesson isn't, oh shit, that's hot. And the lesson also isn't, listen to your dad when he tells you not to do something. The lesson for my father was, I need to provide context for why things are the way that they are. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how wise I am. The message will not get through to the audience. Right? And so... That's some clarity that I've kind of added in perspective that I've added into me showing up back into this business. And so the title of tonight's podcast is Resilience and Purpose, okay? And the goal tonight is to kind of spend some time diving deep into the things that like really drive us forward in our mindset, right? And my goal is to give you some tools and perspective that you can use to ensure that you stay focused, you have like unwavering motivation and making sure that you're able to create success in your life despite some of the challenges and obstacles that you're facing. Okay. And so real quick, John Wingfield sounds like you have a good group of men around you and you have a lot, all had a good conversation after last week. Honestly, John, it's a combination of self-reflection and also making sure that as a leader, I'd never let my ego get the best of me. And that's something that's very challenging. It's always been challenging for me. And you're absolutely right. Like I have a great staff, but honestly, my staff, like my coaching coaches, they'll fucking die for me. And, and if I say this is the hill we're dying on, they'll die on it. And that's kind of one of the things that I'm really trying to instill into the leaders within my organization is Sometimes even I need somebody to give me perspective. So you're 100% right, John. I do have some good folks. But if you don't know this about me, one of the things that I do is I spend a lot of time in self-reflection, trying to make sure that I'm constantly holding myself accountable and being very clear and concise about the things that I'm trying to create for myself. And going into that, I think that the realization is this. If you're not where you want to be, it's because you're not the person that you need to be to get there. That's what I've realized about myself. So if my business isn't where I want it, if my success isn't where I want it, if my finances aren't where I want them to be, if my physique isn't where I want it, if I, my relationship isn't where I want it to be, like anything about my life, the reason it's not where it needs to be or where I want it to be is because I'm not the person who has that. Right. And that's a really hard thing to accept. Right. So like good example. One of the things that really pissed me off is I had some guy in my Facebook group do this long drawn out post talking about how a $500 price tag for one of our 12 week programs was way unrealistic and there's no way that anybody could afford it. And the fact that we were asking that kind of uh, price tag was bullshit. We should be doing it for free. The list goes on. And I asked myself, I'm like, how the fuck do I get these types of people even in my ecosystem? And the reason for that is because I attracted them, right? The same concept applies to like all of the women, the single moms out there who are like, I don't know where all the good men are. I guarantee you all of those good men that you 
are looking for are somewhere in the fucking friend zone or you've been rejected and now they no longer want to take care of another man's kids. But I don't think you're ready for that conversation. So sure, it's the man's fault that they're not man enough to raise another man's children because you made a poor decision on who you wanted to procreate with, right? Not to make the conversation tonight about that, but that's the same general concept and idea, right? So let's spend some time talking about mindset. And so one of the common questions that we get from a lot of our clients and customers is, how can I cultivate and maintain a mindset that thrives when things are difficult, when we have obstacles, when I have distractions in my life? And I think that that's a common thing for people is life is easy when it's easy. And what I found is, is that in my experience, for me, I've always had this problem where I ask myself, when can I get a break? Like, when is God going to cut me some slack? It seems like it's always one thing after another, and I don't even get time to breathe. And it's very hard to stay motivated and consistent and just on track when there's constantly things in your way. And so how is it that there are some people who seem to be doing to do better under pressure? There's other people like me, how I used to be, who struggled with what we'll call self-pity because it never felt like you were good enough. And I think for me, one of the biggest challenges or one of the biggest breakthroughs that I had in my mindset was when I started looking at life as levels, right? So like level one, easy. I can make it through level one. And you finish level one and you're like, wow, that was easy. Cool. Let's do level two. Oh, level two has a little bit harder things, but still easy. Okay, cool. Level three, level four. And then eventually you get to like level 12. And that's when you face like that very first setback. And you're like, man, I can't beat this level. And you're like playing it for hours and hours. And maybe you'll give up because you can't beat it. And then you'll come back to it another day and you'll overcome that. And then you feel really good. And then you go on to level 13, level 14. And maybe you get stuck again on level 15, right? This is kind of the concept of how video games are structured. And most of us can relate to that. Those sticking points are the specific skills personality traits, perspectives, or mindset shifts that need to happen in who we are so that we can develop ourselves into being the version of that person who can successfully navigate that level. And so, yeah, maybe level 12 you had to struggle with, but then 13, 14, and 15 were really easy. That's because you were adequate in the traits that were necessary to accomplish those levels. And then you get to level 16 and you have another sticking point that's completely unrelated. And everybody has a different path and everybody has different sticking points or different levels that they struggle with. And so the first thing is if I'm struggling with level 10, but Johnny over here is struggling with 13 and then I blow past him onto 13 doesn't make me better than Johnny. It just means that Johnny has different feelings things that he needs to develop about himself before he's prepared to move on to the next level in life. And so what I started to do was look at these challenges or these obstacles in life, not as things that set me back, but as things that I needed so that I could move forward. Right. And so when I was able to understand that in order to become the man that I want to be, I need to face challenge, difficulty, hardship, obstacles, and all of those things. Now suddenly I can align my actions and ensure that I'm constantly being challenged rather than avoiding those challenges. Most people avoid those challenges. They resent those challenges. They feel like they're being punished in their life because of those challenges. But the truth is, those are the things that God has given us so that we can become the man that we need to be, that we've asked to become. And so how can I cultivate a mindset that thrives on these challenges and these distractions and these obstacles? 
is understand that those are the things that I need so that I can develop into the man that I'm called to be, right? And so I hope that resonates with you guys because that was a really powerful mindset shift that took me a really long time to acquire. And one of the things that really helped me with maintaining focus on ensuring that I was constantly moving forward in pursuit of those challenges is also being very deliberate and clear about the goals that I have and who I want to be. And so how can I stay focused on these long-term goals and stay consistent towards achieving them? And if I, if you guys don't remember a couple months ago, we did a podcast and I basically said, it's impossible for me to have discipline unless I have goals, right? If you don't have a reason why you're doing the things that you're doing, then it's going to become much more difficult to stay consistent in doing those things that you think you should be doing. So we'll use the, the gym as an example. If you don't have a very compelling reason why you're staying active and fit and in the gym, then on the days you don't feel like it, you're not motivated, you're tired, you have whatever excuse in the book, it's going to be much easier to skip out because there's no perceived consequence on the other end. So one of the ways that you can ensure that you're always focused on your long-term goals and also making sure that your actions are in alignment with creating the life that you want to create is being very specific and deliberate about the goals that you have and ensuring that the goals that you have are in alignment with the life that you want to create. So that goes back to answering the core, very basic entry-level question when it comes to personal development and becoming a man is, what do you want? Who do you want to be? What is the life that you want to create? And in order for you to truly, honestly stay consistent and actually create the habits that are necessary for you to create that life and, and pursue those goals, you have to first be able to be very specific and honest about the life that you want. If you don't know where you're going, then there's no way to get there. So the number one tip that I would give you guys, if you're living in a place where you're struggling with staying focused on the goals that you have, is you need to associate those long-term goals with the long-term outcome, the reason why the life that you're trying to create, right? If you say that I want to go to the gym so I can be healthy and in shape, you're not going to make it, right? You're not you need to have a very compelling reason. Motivation is not a feeling, despite what all of these gurus, even myself have said in the past, motivation is not a feeling. It's a reason, right? And I'll even pull up the, the Webster's Dictionary here real quick. Motivation definition. Motivation, the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. That's not a feeling. It's not. Motivation is not a feeling. By definition, it's a reason. It's a why. So if you're having trouble creating alignment with your goals and aligning your actions with your goals because you lack motivation or you lack discipline, you lack consistency, it's because you haven't given yourself a good enough reason. And so how can you stay focused on your long-term goals is make sure that you're also focused on that long-term outcome that you're trying to create and being very specific about that outcome, okay? And so how do we keep that fuel burning? How do we keep that motivation so that we're always on track and we want to do it? And the truth is, is it's impossible to create the conditions so that you're always going to be motivated. It's impossible to wake up every day and, and want to do it every single day. I work out 10 times a week, Right. Monday through Friday, I wake up in the morning at five. I go to jujitsu from six to seven thirty. I work, spend time with my kids. I hit the gym at six and I get done at seven thirty every day, five days a week. And I can tell you right now, like I'm in a place where I've been working out and lifting weights for so long. And I'm also dealing with joint pain and just getting old and past injuries that the gym isn't even enjoyable for me. It's not. But the reason why I continue to go and stay consistent with it is because, I'll be honest with you, one of the biggest reasons is because of you guys. How am I going to be the fitness coach 
the dude who's teaching you as men to align your actions with the man that you want to be, create goals, create, and, and all the things that we're talking about tonight, if I don't even stay consistent in the gym and work out and be healthy, how am I going to hold my coaches and my staff accountable to that expectation if I'm not holding myself accountable to that expectation, right? And so I do it because I need to lead as an example, not just for my company, my customer, my business, my staff, but also my family, my children, my wife. I can't expect my wife to look like a fucking smoke show while I'm over here looking like a fucking orangutan wearing whitey tighties. I can't expect my sons to take care of themselves, be active in sports and do the things that they should be doing unless I'm showing up and doing that. And I think that's something that a lot of us miss the mark on is we realize that we don't realize that we're not always going to be motivated. We have to have that very compelling reason why. And so one of the questions that I get very commonly is how do I stay consistently motivated even when I'm struggling with setbacks or challenges or obstacles or days that I don't feel like it? And the common cliche motivational speaker answer is, is you're not fucking motivated. But the truth is, is like even those guys aren't motivated. And if I was going to go full David Goggins on you like I have in the past, instead I'll be real with you today and I'll say, look, dude, everybody's human. There are all days where we slip. There are all days where we miss. There are all days where we don't want to go. And there are all, always going to be days that we face where we, we lost that battle. It's true. And anybody who fucking sits there and tries to pretend like they're perfect and they never skip a day and they never slip and they're always disciplined and it's not about motivation, they're lying. Even the Jockos and the Gogginses and the Frisellas, I can tell you right now from firsthand experience, those guys slip. Even though they hold themselves to a highest expectation, but the reason why they slip less is not because they're better than you or more disciplined than you or more intelligent than you or more capable than you. It's because they have a more compelling reason for themselves why they keep doing it. And so one of the things that I think is really important and another perspective that I want to give you about that is it's much easier for people who have faced extreme challenge and hardship in their life to stay consistent with their goals and being on track when they're not feeling motivated than it is for people who haven't faced a significant amount of hardship in their life. And so a phenomenal example is the two guys that I used examples for tonight were Jocko and Goggins. If you guys have read either one of their books, they have both underwent extremely difficult challenges in their lives. Goggins, specifically during his upbringing as a young man, he talks about that and Can't Hurt Me, really great book. And then Jocko during his deployment to Iraq with his SEAL team, very challenging. If you guys don't know during that era, the he wasn't exaggerating when he talked about how it was the most violent time during the entire war while he was there with his team. Very scary. I was there a couple years after in Iraq and it was fucking scary. And I can only imagine what it was like for him, especially being a SEAL. And so those hard challenges where you don't have a choice but to continue driving forward make it easier for you in the future to look at things like going to the gym as minute. But if you're the type of person who's never really had to undergo that extreme trauma, challenge, and hardship, then it's going to be much more difficult for you to stay on track. And so how can we create that intrinsic motivation and drive and discipline like these guys talk about? It's to create the conditions where what I'm doing now that seems really hard today, a year from now, won't be very hard because I'm doing harder shit. Because the truth is, gentlemen, and I've learned this from firsthand experience, is life doesn't get easier. You get better. You're not going to get a break. There's always going to be a challenge. There's always going to be an obstacle. It's always going to hurt. The difference is, is you get better. Your ability to handle, manage, and navigate those things becomes you're more proficient. And so it seems like life has gotten easier, but the fact is it hasn't. You've only gotten better. And so the second that I stopped looking for a fucking break, 
and realized that those are the things that I need so that I can continue to get better. And then gave myself a reason to continue moving forward. My family, my business, my employees, my kids, right? My pride, my ego, like all of those things are legitimate reasons. The only reason I was able to quit smoking cold turkey was because of my ego. I used my ego as a tool because I didn't think, I didn't want people to think less of me after announcing to the world that not only was it easy to quit chewing tobacco, but you guys were also pussies because you couldn't do it. What if I said that publicly to thousands of people and then a week later came back with a dip in my mouth? I would have been, I would have looked like an idiot. So what I chose to do was leverage my ego and use that as a source of motivation, which is another tactic that you can employ. Force accountability by making promises to people that you respect, right? And so, you know, what is one of the strategies that I can use to develop resilience in these situations? One of the biggest strategies that I use is I leverage my innate need to appeal to people, right? So if I make a promise to myself, most of the time and for most people, I can justify breaking a promise to myself. You guys know that. You do it all the time, just like I do. How many times have you been in a situation where you're like, I know I need to go to sleep because I'm going to wake up tomorrow and go to the gym. So I need to get to bed by this time. And then that time comes and you're like, yeah, give me 10 more minutes. But no matter what, I'm waking up tomorrow morning early so I can start going to the gym. And then that time comes tomorrow morning and you're tired. And what do you do? Hit the snooze button, <laughs> right? But nobody knows any different. So you sleep in, you, there's no perceived consequence. So one of the ways that you can make sure that you're always resilient and consistent is by introducing additional layers of accountability by, hey, babe, I'm, gonna, I'm making this commitment. I'm going to do this. Make these commitments to your kids, your boss, your wife, your son. Now, I'm not telling you to force them to hold you accountable because that's a different thing. Last thing I'll ever do is ask my kid to make sure I go to the gym. But what I can do is I say, hey, son, I want to go to the gym tomorrow. Do you want to come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, guess what? I have to go because I'm not going to let my son down. You see what we're doing here? And so that's one of the biggest things I do is I never want to disappoint the people that I love or that I respect. And so the way that I stay consistent with reaching my goals is ensuring that they're privy to the goals that I have, right? So like when I quit drinking alcohol, I told my wife, I'm done drinking. Don't buy it anymore. So guess what? If I wanted to drink alcohol, I was going to have to disappoint her or I was have to, her opinion of me was going to have to change. Because I failed to uphold that commitment. And that's exactly what kept me on track with it. Because I didn't want her to think less of me, right? And so that's one of the tactics that I use, the techniques that I use to stay consistent and accountable, especially during trying times when I'm feeling down on myself, is, is I leverage people's opinions of me for a positive thing. And I look at my ego as a good thing. And I also look at my need for approval from the world as a good thing too, rather than thinking rather than trying to assume this pompous attitude where I'm like, I don't give a fuck whatever people think about me, right? That's not responsible. You should care what people think about you. I think it's important to care what people think about you. But I also think it's even more important to ensure that the opinions you value are from the right people. And that's a key difference, right? I spent some time talking about this earlier in my Instagram story, I think it was, where I said, hey, look, like it's not a bad thing that you value people's opinion of you or you're worried what people think of you, but just make sure they're the right people, right? And so, you know, in my situation, I find it much easier to stay consistent if I'm always making myself accountable to people that I respect and value their opinions versus surrounding myself with people who I don't necessarily value their opinions or people who aren't interested in seeing me grow and get better. And so hopefully that helps. And so the last thing I wanted to spend some time talking about, and I know this is going a little bit longer, is what are the strategies for effective goal setting? And so we spent some time earlier talking a little bit about that, but I want to 
make it kind of very clear so I can give you some very effective strategies that you can implement, okay? Is in order to create a goal, I first have to know what it is that I want for my life and who I want to be, okay? And I talk about this in my book, but we're gonna go over it again, okay? Is look, you should, if you're listening to this, I want you to think to yourself and answer the question and you can drop it in the comments on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, if you want. What is it that you want? What is it that you want for your life? And so for me, while you guys are typing, what I want is true freedom. Okay, so I want to be able to do what I want, when I want, how I want, where I want, with who I want, how I want, where I want, with zero limit, obviously with reason, because I tr there, there's nobody on planet Earth who truly has that, like what I just described. But I want to live in a world where I have, I, I'm not, I don't live under anyone else's thumb, expectations, time. That's the most important thing. And so for me, one of the biggest things that I've always struggled with during my time in the military, even when I was in school and also my time as a contractor in a govy was I hate being on other people's time. I hate it. Like I can't stand being on other people's time. I want to be the master of my time. And so whatever it is that I need to create in my life so that I can be the master of my own time, that's what I want. And so I'm very clear and specific about the life that I want. That's a very big goal, if you don't know that, right? And maybe yours isn't that big, right? So like Dave Sprode, I want to have a house on a jungle island. If that's really true, I truly believe, Dave, that you have the capacity to sell your house, sell your business, and go do that tomorrow if you wanted to, right? But like if you're truly honest about what the life is that you want to live, now what we can start doing is we can split that into actionable things that we need. And so I want you to picture your life that you want up here, okay? And we're building a ladder to that, right? And on that ladder, there's skills, there's personality traits, and there's beliefs. So on one side of the ladder are my skills. The more skills I have, the bigger that ladder. And on the other side of that ladder are my personality traits, who I am, okay? And then the rungs of the ladder are my beliefs. Eventually, when I'm climbing this ladder towards the life that I want to lead, I'm going to come to a point where I'm either lacking a skill, a belief, or a trait. And I can't go any further on that ladder until I have acquired the thing that I'm missing. And so if you're trying to build a business and you lack the skill set to build back end automations for marketing, in order to advance to the next step on that ladder, I have to do that. If I'm a manager or if I'm in my relationship and I want to do a better job of serving my wife and I'm having trouble creating closeness with her in our relationship, one of the personality traits that I may be missing is the ability to be considerate or empathetic of her feelings in situations that I haven't experienced, right? And so in order for me to more effectively communicate and foster a better relationship with my wife, I have to develop that trait. And then obviously the easy one is, is like if I don't believe I have the ability to take that next step upwards towards the life that I'm trying to create, then it doesn't matter how much my skills or, tr or personality traits or how high they go, I can never take that next step. And for those of you guys who don't know, that example comes from Alex Hormozzi's $100 million offers book, but it makes total sense. And so when it comes to how can I be specific about the goals that I wanna create and create that path or that roadmap towards creating the life that I want, the way that I do that is, is I need to have a certain degree of accountability and self-reflection in my life in place that gives me the ability to identify what the skills, personality traits, or limiting beliefs are within my current identity so that I can conduct the development that's necessary to grow to that next level. And once I've identified those shortfalls, then I can tie a goal to the development or the acquisition of that 
skill or trait or belief, <laughs> right? And I know this is probably like going way up here for you guys, but the bottom line is, is I need to figure out what's stopping me from getting where I want to go. And until I'm able to identify the actual thing that's stopping me from getting where I want to go, then I can't associate a goal to overcoming that. And so if you're looking for a strategy so that you can effectively set goals that are going to push you towards the next level or the things that you're trying to create for your life or become the man that you want to be, you need to first be able to identify what your shortfalls are. And one of the biggest challenges that I had and the mindset shift that needed to occur in order for me to be able to do this was understanding that in order for me to attain the goals that I've set for myself, I first need to be very deliberate about the goals that I'm setting and they need to be measurable, achievable, realistic type goals that are within reach. And so what we do is we say, Hey, what is the life that I want to have? Okay. What do I need to do in order to get there? AKA what am what do I need to do to get there? And then from there, what am I missing so that I can get to that thing? And the reality is guys, and this is kind of the fu funny thing about it when it comes to goal setting is if you've ever done a vision board, you'll know that you will never acquire everything on your vision board before you make the next one or you have new things you want to add to it. And so basically what I'm saying is when I create goals, I'm never actually going to ch achieve them. I will never, if I'm doing it right, I will never actually reach my goals because once I get within reach of that goal, my natural desire to improve and get better and raise the bar and in my development, who I as a, am as a man I'm going to move the stake even further. This, my friends, everything that I just talked about here, and I'm going to blow your mind, is how we as men avoid mental health issues like depression and anxiety. If I'm actively in pursuit and that goal has a direct alignment with creating the life that I want to create, and I'm living in a place of integrity with the man that I know I should be, then every single day I wake up, I'll be actively working towards something very specific that I want that's measurable. And then when it comes, point, comes time for me to reach that, I get a daily hit of legitimate dopamine, right? Not fake dopamine that comes from likes and comments and shares and fucking phones, but legitimate dopamine. And that dopamine is what gives me true fulfillment in my life. And when I feel fulfilled, it's very less likely that I'm going to feel depressed. Because when you're fulfilled, you're driven, you're excited, you're happy, you're accomplished, and you're proud. And so if you're living in a world where you're struggling with depression, and you're struggling with fulfillment, you're struggling with not having energy or motivation or drive and you're lacking ambition and you feel like life is meaningless and you're tired and you don't know why you're even here. You lack purpose. I want you to go back and ask yourself, what is it that I want? Who do I want to be? And then from there, you can start identifying what's missing from your life so that you can have that. And then when you do that, you can create the goals so that you can develop the skills, traits, or beliefs that are necessary to have that thing. And then you start to feel more and more fulfilled as you start acquiring those skills, traits, and beliefs. And you develop a relationship of trust with yourself over time, which develops confidence. And this entire picture that I just drew for you is your purpose as a man. Day or uh, John Wingfield, I want to be around for my grandkids and gain generational wealth for my family. What does that look like? You just want to be around for your grandkids? Again, you need to make sure that the goals that you set are measurable. What does that mean? Be specific. Okay. Don't say, I want to be a good dad. Those types of goals are just, they're cop outs, right? They are. I want to be around for my grandkids. Okay. 
Who doesn't want to be around for their freaking grandkids? What is it that you truly want? I want to create generational wealth for my family. What does that mean? Generational wealth. Through what mechanism? What's the medium? What's the timeline? How do I measure that? Those are the things that you need to be doing. And so you're saying, I want to be around for my grandkids and gain generational wealth for my family. Cool. That's a start. Now, what does that mean? If I don't have a measurable thing that's tangible that I can hold myself accountable to when it comes to that goal, then it's not a goal, right? To believe it or not, even though he was being facetious, Dave Sprode said, I want a house on a jungle island is a better goal than I want to develop generational wealth for my family. Why? Because Dave Sprode's house on a jungle island goal is something that I can actually tangibly acquire and measure generational wealth for my family that's an object like it's subjective what does that even mean i don't my family growing up like we were freaking homeless so as far as i'm concerned the wealth that i've amassed up to this point in my life is considered way more generational than my predecessors and so you can see how when i don't have a very specific measurable tangible thing that's associated to an outcome it can be, it's less likely that I'm going to stay disciplined and motivated towards achieving that thing because I haven't associated that to a specific outcome. This is the hack. This is how the most successful people continue to create more and more success and the most disciplined people continue to create more and more discipline and stay consistent is because they're deliberate with their actions and they're specific with their goals. This is what I want. This is how I measure that. This is the timeline, right? That I'm going to create that by. And this is how I determine whether or not I was successful. And so a good example. This is a phenomenal example, actually. Do you feel a sense of accomplishment or fulfillment when you go out in the backyard and you play Frisbee with your kid or with your friend? We'll say with your friend. You could probably go out there and kind of leisurely throw your Frisbee back and forth and have a good time for a little while, but eventually it's going to come to a point where you no longer want to play Frisbee. It gets boring. It's not fulfilling, right? Okay. What if I was to, to put a point system where I can beat my partner based upon the number of times they drop the Frisbee? I remember one time when I was ki a kid, my mom had a boyfriend. His name was Phil, and he was a Frisbee guy. He played Frisbee golf, and that's all he fucking did. He was like some dude who literally drank, smoked drugs, and fucking did Frisbee. Looking back at it, it's kind of funny because it makes a lot of sense. When I was a kid, all I knew was that he liked to play Frisbee. And so we would go out into the parking lot of our apartment complex where we lived, and he would play Frisbee with me. And I remember specifically one day, I was probably like in fourth or fifth grade, we were playing Frisbee, and he had set up a bunch of a 40-ounce empty glass bottle. And it was probably like 30 or 40 feet away. And he told me, I'll give you five bucks if you knock this down from over there. I sat there for, I would say, a good 45 minutes actively engaged playing Frisbee with him, trying to knock that empty 40-ounce bottle down from where I was standing across the parking lot. And when I did, it was like, yeah, let's do it again. It was fulfilling. It felt good. I was accomplished. I was proud. I got all the good feelings because there was an outcome that I had associated to that activity. There is no freaking way I would have been able to go out there and play Frisbee with that dude back and forth like that for 45 minutes without an outcome, without a goal, without something measurable that I could accomplish while I was doing it. This is why sports like football, baseball, basketball are all fun, entertaining, and exciting, but other sports like cheerleading aren't nearly as exciting or exhilarating for people to watch. Why? Because there's no stakes. There's no conflict. There's no a cheerleading competition may be considered a sport depending upon who you talk to, but Success or failure, or who wins or loses, is just based upon who's the judge's opinion. A lot of times there isn't even a fucking rubric. Versus when you play football or basketball or baseball, 
it's a measurable thing that I can target and go after a, a run, a shot, a touchdown, a field goal. And now there's a conflict because there's another team trying to get the same thing. That's why it's entertaining. That's why it's fulfilling. Even for us to watch those things are fulfilling, right? Okay. So from that same perspective, you need to introduce stakes, something measurable where you're pushing towards an outcome in your life that when you achieve it, you get that sense of accomplishment. And so if you say my goal is this and it's not something that I can actually attain, then it's not really a goal. And so this gentleman is exactly how I, the mindset shift that I've created in my life so that I can create discipline, consistency, consistent motivation, accountability, and overcome times where I may not be as focused. I may be down on myself. I need to be resilient and I have challenges. As it all comes down to me being very clear, concise, and deliberate about who it is that I want to be, the example that I want to set, and the life that I want to lead. And then reverse engineering that so that I can identify my shortfalls and do the development that's necessary so that I can continue to move that stake forward in who it is that I am. This requires an extreme amount of accountability through self-reflection. You have to be aware. And I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges with people is either A, they're completely unaware or B, they lack the personal integrity and, account and accountability to be willing to have those hard conversations with themselves. And so if you're in a place in your life where you're struggling with feeling fulfilled, feeling accomplished, you deal with depression and you struggle with anxiety, I would challenge you to, to have a conversation with yourself where you become very deliberate about who it is that you want to become and then start working your way backwards on answering the question why you're not there now. And if you can do that, then you're going to inevitably create the mechanisms that you need to stay consistent, motivated, resilient, and on target towards creating that goal, as long as you're specific and deliberate, all right? And so hopefully that was valuable for you. Obviously, I'm sure you guys noticed tonight the tone changed significantly. Let me know your feedback. I really value it. Send me a message. Send me a note. Drop a comment. Send me a messenger pigeon. Like, I don't give a fuck. However you want to do it. But the commitment that I'm making is like on the Make America Swole Again podcast and the Iron Forge coaching, like there's no longer going to be this tone of this is what you should do. This is how you should live your life. This is what you need to be. This is who you need to become. It's just going to be me sharing perspective and hopefully answering some of the questions that you're asking yourself so that you can overcome some of the internal struggles that you're facing. And maybe my, my experience and my wisdom can help you. Hopefully it does. If not, hopefully at least it was somewhat entertaining. And so for those of you guys who don't know, we also do a live stream on Thursdays. It's called the Iron Forge Group Coaching. This is a roundtable discussion that I do with my coaching staff where we answer questions from our clients and customers. And the idea is to provide as much direct value to you guys so that you can move closer towards creating the outcomes that you want to create in your life. That call happens on two, or excuse me, Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And so... This next week, what we're going to be talking about is managing your diet and your nutrition and your sleep habits so that you can maintain, sustain, and peak energy levels. We're going to be talking about some techniques that I use to implement as far as time management is concerned so that I can stay on track with the things that I have going on despite distractions and shifts in priorities and things like that. And then we're also going to be spending some time talking about how you can optimize your diet for those types of situations, especially for people who are struggling and always on the move, or maybe not like the more blue collar types who are all over the place for their food, with their food and in their jobs. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is some of the things that we can do to A, ensure that we're actively recovering and how our training is going to affect that. So what are some techniques that we can ensure that we're going to recover the most efficient way, including some of the supplements and peptides that you can do. And then I'll also be talking about one of the things that I want to spend some time talking about is for the guys that travel a lot, what are some things that you can be doing to stay fit, 
during things like vacation or traveling for work or going out of town or whatever the case may be. So all of these things are actual practical things that we either implement into our own lives and see results, or we work to implement into the lives of our existing clients. All successful, practical, proven tips and techniques that we're going to be teaching on Thursday. And so if you want to be part of that, again, we go live Thursday night right here on this channel and hope you guys enjoy. Real quick, Woody, he said, I have a hard time feeling accomplished when I complete a job. I feel like I could have always done better. And so that's kind of interesting, right? Is, is you kind of have this mindset of what you feel is apathy or like self-criticism, like you're hypercritical of yourself. And I think for me, whenever I feel like when I've completed a job and I don't feel accomplished, it, it's, it's not necessarily because I could have done a better job, but maybe because the job that I gave myself wasn't challenging enough in the first place, right? The only way that you can feel accomplished and appreciate yourself and feel validated and all of those things that we as men seek is if you're doing things that you perceive as difficult. And one of the big mistakes that I always made when I was younger, and from my opinion, one of the biggest disservices that you can do for yourself is always operating in a place where it's easy to you, but it may not be easy to everybody else. It's easy to you. And that was something that I really struggled with, like with school and sports and physical related things, right? So a good example is if I go into the gym and I put 315 on the bench press and I do it for a set of 15, I'm not really going to be a accomplished. Maybe the guys in the gym watching me lift and the people around me who, who are there see me do it and they're like, oh my God, that's so amazing. You did great. Why? Because that's difficult for them and they see me do it. So therefore they assume it's a difficult thing, right? Their perception is what creates that sense of awe that just because he's impressed doesn't mean I'm fulfilled in order for me to feel fulfilled. I need to do something that's challenging for me, not for him. And so the moment I stopped measuring my success or my progress or myself against other people's potential is when I started to feel proud of myself and I was able to develop a relationship of love and trust and appreciation with the things that I was creating. So try that, Woody. Maybe step into a place where if you're not feeling accomplished, then accept the fact that maybe it's time for you to start asking more from yourself. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I don't have complete context on your life, but I know that that's what works for me. Greg, thank you. I needed that perspective more than anything. Absolutely, brother. I hope it was helpful tonight. Chad, definitely need to be on that call Thursday. You're always welcome, brother. Dave, they should teach the things you talk about in a public school system. Well, that's actually a great segue. So if you guys enjoy the content and kind of the new angle that we're taking here and the knowledge that we're dropping on these calls... I really love doing this. This is something I really do appreciate, love, and I, I will always be here doing these weekly calls. I, I don't think it's ever going to be something that I 100% walk away from. And I always made the commitment to everybody that no matter how big my audience gets and how many followers and how much money I make and how much success we create, I'll always show up for this for you guys. And I'll always be the guy that I have always been. And so for as long as you guys show up and you feel like this is valuable, then I'll continue to do it. And if you don't, then I won't. Or actually, if you don't, then I'll adjust so that it is valuable for you because that's how important it is for me. But with that said, if you did get value from this, I think that the best thing that you can do to help me and my business as well as help the people you know is to share the message. Send this out to your friends. If you feel like it would be valuable to them, send it to them and maybe it can have the impact on them that it had on you. All right. So with all that said, thank you so much for tuning in. All you guys hanging out in the chat over here on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much. For those of you guys on Instagram, hopefully you enjoyed. This isn't something that I stream very often here. If you'd like more, again, we do this every Tuesday and Thursday night on YouTube, Facebook. I'll probably be making an effort to do more streaming here as well as TikTok. But I only have one phone, so we're probably going to have to go back and forth and decide where we're going to do that. With that said, I'll see you Thursday night. Thank you so much.